Our marriage seemed to be going smoothly, at least that's what I believed. But everything changed after our daughter was born. Our once harmonious home now felt like a battleground of contrasting emotions. Michael, my husband, began to show a cold and distant attitude towards me and our daughter. His behavior escalated to a point where one day, in a fit of frustration, he lashed out saying, I can't stand the noise from that kid. I've changed the locks, so don't even think about coming back. You and she can go sleep on the streets for all I care. His words, harsh and unyielding, left me and our daughter stranded, ousted from our own home. However, he seems oblivious to the fact that if anyone should be out in the cold, it's him, not us. He doesn't realize that he has no right to treat us this way. It's like he's forgotten the basic principles of kindness and respect that are the foundation of any family. My name is Jessica. Let me start by sharing the story of how I met my husband, Michael. Our paths crossed through work. At the time, I was the editor-in-chief at a magazine, where I wrote articles about various hobbies and skills. One day, for a story, I met Michael, who became a fascinating subject for my piece. His hobby was camping, and he would spend every possible moment outdoors, immersed in nature. Beyond just camping, Michael was also actively involved in managing a group of outdoor enthusiasts. He worked part-time at an outdoor gear shop, a fact that piqued the interest of my company, leading us to feature him. Initially, I wasn't particularly drawn to camping, but as I listened to Michael's stories and experiences, I gradually found myself captivated by the allure of camping. Then came the opportunity for me to write about our experiences in the magazine. I had the chance to join Michael on a camping short trip. During this time, I rediscovered the joy of camping and slowly found myself drawn to Michael's passion for the outdoors and his love of nature. He wasn't just passionate. He was also incredibly skilled, making and customizing his own camping gear for convenience. This ingenuity was one of the reasons I found myself interested in him. Eventually, I took the initiative and we started dating, sharing numerous camping adventures together. As I grew to understand his perspectives and thoughts, my affection for him deepened. Michael would often say, I'm not much for the hustle and bustle of the city. That's why I chose to live a bit in the countryside. True to his word, his rental apartment was situated a bit away from the town, near a flowing river with mountains visible in the distance. His preference for this location only deepened my appreciation of his genuine love for nature. So, there we were, Michael and I, on the cusp of a new journey together as we decided to get married. The catalyst for our decision was the wonderful news of my pregnancy. I had always envisioned a life with him. So this news was a blessing, a joyous milestone leading us to the altar. As we began envisioning our future together, the conversation naturally turned to finding our new home. Michael's unique preferences were at the forefront of this quest. He dreamed of a home close to nature, where the gentle murmur of a nearby river could be heard, and where the grandeur of the mountains graced our views. His desires extended beyond just the location. He had specific ideas about the house's layout and a garden's design. It was clear that a single-family home would best suit our needs. One weekend, we set out to find our perfect abode. I remember walking through various houses, Michael commenting on each one. What about this one, Jessica? Can you imagine us having breakfast here overlooking the river? He would ask, his eyes sparkling with excitement. His enthusiasm was infectious and I found myself caught up in his vision. Finally, we found a place that felt like home. It was nestled in a tranquil area, surrounded by nature's beauty. The house, built predominantly with wood, had an aura of warmth and welcome. Large windows adorned the walls, ensuring that every room was bathed in natural light and offered stunning views of the outdoors. Michael was particularly impressed with the living room. Look at this space, Jessica. It's perfect. Imagine us here with our little one surrounded by nature. He said, his voice filled with emotion. 
We decided to buy the house and embarked on the journey of making it our home. We agreed to split the mortgage, a mutual commitment to our shared future. And so, with hearts full of hope and love, we began our married life in this beautiful haven we had created together. Our marriage, which had started on such a high note, continued to flourish in the beginning. Our shared love for the outdoors saw us frequently embarking on camping trips. And at times, we even set up a tent in our backyard, creating a mini-adventure right at home. These days were filled with laughter and a sense of completeness that I had always craved. However, amidst this idyllic existence, a subtle shift began to take root, a change that would soon cast a shadow over our blissful life. The birth of our daughter, Jessie, which should have been an unbridled celebration of joy, unexpectedly became the starting point of unforeseen challenges. We named her Jessie, a part of my own name, Jessica, woven into hers. This was an idea lovingly suggested by Michael. Since she's our daughter, how about we integrate a part of your name into hers, Jessica? He had said with a smile. His suggestion filled me with warmth and an overwhelming sense of love. I admired how he had thoughtfully connected our daughter to both of us. I imagined Jessie growing up to be as warm and kind-hearted as her name suggested. A perfect blend of her parents. I even whimsically thought about what name we might have chosen if we had a boy, perhaps a part of Michael's name. With Jessie's arrival, our little family expanded. And my life took a turn as I transitioned to working from home, focusing on nurturing our new joy. However, in the quiet moments, I began to sense a change. Michael's once endearing suggestion about Jesse's name started to feel like the beginning of something I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was as if from that moment, a gradual but perceptible shift began to unfold in our lives, altering the once happy rhythm of our family. I poured my heart into raising Jessie. She was the light of our lives. Her laughter and tiny steps filling our home with joy. I dreamt of the day when we would all go camping together. A trio united in our love for the outdoors. Balancing work and motherhood was challenging. But the joy Jessie brought made every effort worthwhile. However, amidst this bliss, I noticed a concerning change in Michael. He seemed increasingly detached from Jesse, often aloof and distant. When Michael returned from work, I expected him to rush to Jesse, to scoop her up in his arms. But instead, he barely acknowledged her presence. Even when I cradled her, sharing her milestones excitedly, he would avert his gaze, showing little interest. My attempts to draw his attention, like pointing out how Jessie's hair had started to curl and how adorable she looked, were met with disinterest. Oh really? That's nice. He would respond, his words devoid of warmth. This indifference was a stark contrast to the stories I had grown up hearing. My mother often recounted how my father would immediately embrace me after returning from work, his love for me evident in every action. My friends with children spoke of their husband's doting nature. I had always imagined Michael would share this enthusiasm for our daughter. But that was not the case. The distance grew more pronounced as Jessie started to reach out to him, her little hands grasping for his attention. Each time she tried to crawl towards him or climb onto his lap, Michael would quickly hand her back to me. Jessica, Jessie seems to want to play. Can you take care of her? He'd say, his eagerness to distance himself from his own daughter painfully clear. The once warm and affectionate man I knew had changed, leaving a void where his love for Jesse should have been. This transformation in Michael's behavior marked a turning point in our relationship. The once strong bond we shared seemed to fray with each passing day. Jesse, who should have been the embodiment of our love, instead became a silent witness to the growing chasm between us. As I watched her play, her innocent eyes unaware of the tension, I couldn't help but wonder where the man I married had gone. Michael became increasingly indifferent, not only towards Jesse, but also towards me. No matter how excitedly I shared Jesse's milestones with him, like her first words or her attempts to stand, 
His responses were always dispassionate. When I asked for his help while I ran errands, he brushed it off, saying, Why don't you just take her with you? His dismissive attitude made me question his affection for our daughter, and it was hard not to feel a growing mistrust towards him. Trying to bridge the gap, I asked him about taking a family camping trip. Where should we go camping as a three? His reply was crushing. Seriously, camping with a baby who cries more than she speaks? That doesn't sound fun at all. I had hoped for a future where Jesse could walk and talk, where we could enjoy family outings together. His lack of enthusiasm and understanding was disheartening. As Michael's detachment persisted, even Jesse's first birthday went uncelebrated by him. Our relationship, once warm and filled with shared dreams, had grown cold. The joyous addition of our daughter, which should have brought us closer, seemed to have created an unbridgeable distance between us. Our once cherished family portrait had gradually faded, leaving a profound void in its place. I was the one who was at the end of my rope with this kind of relationship with my husband. Jessie, our little girl, faced the prospect of growing up deprived of her father's affection. Meanwhile, I was teetering on the edge, my emotions a tangled mess of frustration and looming stress. The house, once a haven of joyful chatter, had transformed into an unsettling quietude. I noticed that my daughter also became a child who cries a lot like a baby, perhaps because she is afraid of her father's irritability. Then, an extraordinary day unfolded, one that defied belief. Yearning for a breath of fresh air and with errands to attend to, I took Jesse to the park. Michael, off from work, was presumably enjoying his downtime at home. However, upon our return, a surprise awaited us. The front door, which I had anticipated Michael would open from inside, was inexplicably locked. Puzzled, I tried my key, expecting it to turn easily. But to my dismay, it resisted. The key, stubbornly refusing to fit, left me flistered and escalating into panic. After several futile attempts, the door remained unyielding. In sheer desperation, I pushed Michael's number. His response when it came was a shock that reverberated through my very core, leaving me reeling from its impact. Ah, you're back. The door won't open. Well, of course it wouldn't. I changed the locks. For me, changing the locks of the house is a simple task. Michael's voice on the phone was cold and detached. I've always said I like peace and quiet. And honestly, Jessie is just so noisy. She cries at the slightest thing, and all the sounds of nature, the flowing river, the mountains, it's all ruined by her noise. I've had enough. I just want some peace. His words hit me like a ton of bricks. It was clear now. Michael had never loved Jessie. In fact, he saw her as a nuisance, an unwelcome interruption in his life. My frustration and anger reached a boiling point. How dare he change the locks without telling me? I thought bitterly. His adeptness in camping, his skill in the wilderness, now used for such a purpose, filled me with indignation. And he didn't stop there. So I'd appreciate it if you don't come back to this house, okay? You like camping, don't you? He continued mockingly. Why don't you and the kid go and camp out somewhere? Enjoy your fun days out in the open. Every day will be an adventure for you. His words were the last straw. My fury was at its peak. But more than that, any love I had for him evaporated, replaced by a deep-seated resentment. I decided then and there, following his cold suggestion, that I wouldn't return to that house. In fact, I didn't want to. With a newfound calmness, I took Jesse and decided to go back to my parents' home, away from the house that no longer felt like a home. Reaching my breaking point, I stood firm in the face of adversity. Michael had seemingly forgotten a crucial aspect of our shared life. Prioritizing my next steps, I contacted my parents and various acquaintances, embarking on a journey back to my roots. As I did, a thought crossed my mind, tinged with a blend of anger and determination. He should be the one camping outdoors. Thus began Jesse's and my temporary stay at my parents' home. Their worry for my well-being was palpable. 
as they offered comfort and solace. They embraced Jessie with a gentleness that eased some of my anxieties. I longed for Jessie to experience the affection of a father figure, a role I deemed essential, and one that my father graciously accepted. His affection towards Jesse was a balm to my troubled heart, and I couldn't be more grateful for their unwavering support, ensuring her well-being and growth in these trying times. The only thing left was to wait for Michael to face the repercussions of his actions. However, that moment arrived sooner than anticipated. Orchestrated by my own hands, one day, while working remotely at my parents' house, and Jesse being lovingly cared for by them, an unexpected phone call disrupted the calm. Hey you, did you put her house up for sale? I'm being told to get out. What in the world are you up to? Michael's voice was laden with panic and confusion. The real estate agent had acted promptly, it seemed. Michael seemed oblivious to the gravity of his own actions, as he had proclaimed himself. Selling the house was a natural consequence of his demand for me to leave. Yes, I decided to sell the house because you told me to leave. It's only logical, isn't it? I responded, understanding his confusion yet acknowledging the inevitability of this outcome. His frustration was palpable. What? This is too arbitrary. The house isn't just yours to sell. He argued. I've been paying half the mortgage. It's my house too. You're unbelievable. He couldn't accept the reality that had unfolded. I calmly retorted. You're right about the mortgage. We did agree to split it. But let's face facts. You haven't been paying your half, have you? It was time to lay bare the truth. Besides, your income has never been substantial or stable. Working part-time at an outdoor shop isn't enough, and your little adventure club doesn't exactly bring in a fortune either. It was a harsh truth for him. His erratic income from the shop and his outdoor enthusiast group wasn't making ends meet. His dreams of outdoor adventures and the little income they provided were far from sufficient to maintain a stable life. This financial instability, coupled with his lack of commitment to our family, had led to the unraveling of our household. Michael's frustration was evident in his voice, but the reality was clear. The house sale was a repercussion of his actions a consequence of the path he had chosen. My decision to sell the house was not just a reaction to his ultimatum. It was a statement of independence and a step towards a new beginning for Jesse and me. Michael seemed to have a skewed perception of our home being solely his, but as he had vehemently demanded that I leave, I decided to take his words at face value and put the house up for sale. This decision probably baffled him, but it was a direct consequence of his actions. His usual excuse of, things are tight this month, I'll definitely pay next month, had become a recurring theme. This inconsistency in fulfilling his financial obligations highlighted the lack of stability in his income, undermining his credibility to take on a mortgage. The house was in my name, a logical outcome given my higher and more stable income. Essentially, the house was mine. I had been the primary contributor to our living expenses, and even paid the hefty down payment for the house from my personal savings. His claim of the house being partly his was a gross overlook of these facts. He had no rightful claim to the house. Yet, he had the audacity to change the locks, attempting to evict Jesse and me from our own home. I confronted Michael, laying out the facts and countering his arguments. He was left speechless by my words. But it wasn't just me who harbored anger towards him. There were others who shared this sentiment. And I had been in contact with someone who could rightfully deliver the retribution he deserved. Despite my efforts to reason with Michael, he seemed oblivious to the consequences of his actions. I had to remind him that not only my belongings but also Jesse's were still locked inside our home. When I requested him to leave the door unlocked so I could retrieve our possessions, his response was petulant, almost like a defeated child's tantrum. He spitefully suggested that he would only unlock the door if I halted the sale of the house. It was obvious that he did not understand the gravity of his actions and tried to use our private property as a bargaining chip. 
I decided to involve someone who could remind him of the seriousness of the situation. It wasn't long before Michael had an unexpected visitor. The door was fervently knocked upon by none other than his own parents, the very people I had reached out to. They confronted Michael with a mix of anger and disbelief, questioning his understanding of his own actions. Michael, open up. Do you even realize what you're doing? They demanded, their frustration echoing through the door. Their arrival was a turning point, forcing Michael to confront the reality of his actions. The situation he had created was now unraveling, and he was finally beginning to see the full picture of the chaos he had caused. It was inevitable that Michael's parents, upon learning of their sin's actions, would not remain silent. Their confrontation was direct and stern. His father's words were not an exaggeration. Open up, Michael. This could turn into a police matter if you don't open right now. Faced with the severity of the situation, Michael had no choice but to unlock the door. His father's warnings were based on reality. Michael's actions could indeed be construed as theft or unlawful entry. Subsequently, Michael received a severe reprimand, and his parents decided to stay in the house until it was officially sold. When I returned to collect my belongings, Michael's parents graciously allowed me in and offered a sincere apology. With their help, I was also able to get Michael to sign the divorce papers promptly, and I successfully retrieved all my belongings, as far as I was concerned. My connection with that house was over. A few days later, the house was put up for sale, and Michael was evicted. In a twist of irony Michael, as I had predicted, ended up experiencing the life of homelessness. It was a stark reminder of how actions can have unforeseen and life-altering consequences. When Michael found himself without a home, he turned to his parents for shelter. However, they were at the height of their anger and refused to accept him. How could you, Michael, telling your wife and a small child to live outdoors? Your actions are unforgivable. They exclaimed in disbelief. Despite being his parents, they couldn't overlook his actions and decided to take a tough stance as a means of teaching him a lesson. It was an unfortunate twist for Michael, an outdoor enthusiast, to now face a harsh reality using his camping gear for survival. Living in the outdoors for real brought numerous practical challenges. With his already limited income, Michael began cutting corners in his daily life. He refrained from visiting bathhouses and laundromats, resorting to cleaning himself and his clothes in a river. Unlike the pristine rivers he was used to in the mountains, these were far from clean, leading to an unpleasant odor surrounding him. This change didn't go unnoticed, and as a result, his work hours were reduced, and he was even excluded from the outdoor group he managed. Ultimately, with no source of income, Michael had no choice but to take up a job as a janitor with a garbage collection company to make hens meet. Meanwhile, I've been getting by with a little help from my parents, pouring my energy into work every day. Cherishing family time has become my daily routine, as I witness the growth of my daughter. She's thriving, and her daily progress is something I'd love to chronicle in a column. This has fueled me, leading to a new project through interviewing parenting experts for an upcoming feature. My approval for this project has been granted. Though my marriage was challenging, it now feels like a valuable experience. I've embarked on a new journey, rediscovering the joys of parenting. I look forward to growing and evolving alongside Jesse.